Hello, and welcome to this edition of Tony G Psychic Medium. I'm Tony G, and I have been a psychic and a medium and a channel for as long as I can remember. Today, I have a very special guest with me, a great friend of mine. Patty is joining us. And today, Patty and I are going to bring universal messages for you. Whenever Patty and I have conversations, the conversations always take on a life of their own where I'm channeling messages from those up above for pretty much everyone. Today, we're going to do that. We're going to ask universal questions, questions that probably everybody would like the answer to, and I will channel the answers to them. Very excited about this. Patty and I were talking the other day and we said, let's just do this and put it out there for everyone to hear and see. And I said, that's an incredible idea, Patty. So Patty, welcome to my show. Thank you so much, Tony. It's a pleasure. It's an honor to have you. Thank you very much. So I don't know what questions, Patty, that you have for me, but I'm very excited. And I will be channeling today and I'll, I'll be letting the um, universal intelligence or light speak right through me to answer these questions. Okay. So whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and ask your first question. Okay. So I was thinking about reincarnation and yeah, I have a few questions about reincarnation, okay. but I, we should just start at the beginning to validate that. Is there reincarnation? Yes, but not in the way that you are brought to believe in reincarnation. Okay, so the way that you are brought to believe and the way that reincarnation, I mean, what is the difference between the two you're making that delineation? You are brought to believe that if indeed there is reincarnation, that it's one life after the other. And in yeah. some ways that is true, but think of it more as parallel lives happening at the same time on different planes. Would you be the same age on every plane in parallel? Or? It's a probability and possibility, but not a definite. Oh, that brings up all kinds of... Um, so, so, so some of the things I've wondered about is, just to confirm, reincarnation is in every culture, in every country, in every religion. It doesn't matter. Correct? Correct. Okay. okay. Now, I, and Patty, just really quick, if this is Tony again, not channeling, if you go to YouTube and you look on um, children in, I believe it's England, England, truly believes in reincarnation and the children come in and they talk about who they were in the past lives and they look it up right away oh. and they find those lives okay. that they exist. As a matter of fact, one of, the, um, one of the stories that I watched on YouTube was this young boy who was under the age of seven who said that a man from the village over had killed him in his previous life. He knew his previous name. He knew um, his, what he did, and he knew the name of the man, and he knew how this man was killed. And so they went and they found the pitchfork, and they tested it, and the man was prosecuted for killing that man um, who this child said wow. he reincarnated from. Okay. So where it's widely accepted and believed, the children, when they start talking about it, it's very open and they, they research it and they find those people. Okay. So, so are you always with the same group of people when you're reincarnated? Are you always, say, American? Are you always English? No. Are you always Chinese? You know, et cetera. No, okay, so uh, when you reincarnate, you may come in in one life where your parent is a sibling or even in some cases a lover and in another life that 
person may be opting out of that life, but you'll incarnate with other people from your soul group. Okay. But you're always in the same, maybe part of the world? Not quite. You may come into a part of the world. Let's say, uh, uh, we often say, as you go out, so shall you come in. And as you, uh, what you create is what you come back to. So let's say a child is born in Ethiopia, and this child is born into a circumstances of lack. But then this child is adopted and brought to America, and from there the child prospers and mm -hmm. no longer has lack. This child evolves, and when the child comes back, or as he grows, and as long as he keeps prospering, when he exits and he returns, he will come back where he left off. It is a, a schooling of a sorts. Okay. So, so is it predetermined before you reincarnate what you are to accomplish or how your life will flow? Millennials ago, millennia ago, this was written millennia ago. You are now living out what was written millennia ago. It does not mean you do not have control. You can take as much time as you wish to accomplish what is to be accomplished, mm -hmm. or you can make it as expedient as you choose. If you know what it is to accomplish, right? That would have to be kind of wrapped into that. Correct. And remember, your life path is intertwined with many other life paths. So not only are you playing your own role, but you're playing the role for many other lives that you intercede with and connect with while you're here. So, <clears throat> so thinking of um, people who are very instrumental in advancing civilization, advancing society, um, say Einstein, Albert Einstein, or Da Vinci or Michelangelo, those kind of really influential artists and thinkers, do they come back as again as another influential person? Absolutely. Now, when you speak of all of these people, each and every one of them worked with higher beings. They, in, right up until Steve Jobs, and many that are on this plane right now uh, that you are aware of and that you are not aware of are working with or channeling these higher intelligences to be able to create the technology that is coming to this plane. You see, this is a creating plane. We are here to create and co-create. When you connect with the all that is, the angelic realm, whatever you choose to call it, that creative process comes naturally and quickly. You can create things you would have never even imagined before. Quite the little statement there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Um... So those people weren't necessarily predetermined to be influential, oh. or they were? It was part of their destiny. Okay. It was part of their destiny. They held on to that knowing all along, and they worked with it. They didn't concede to the herd. They were not afraid to be the lone wolf and go out and do what others said could not be done. Okay. They didn't subscribe to what you now call the nine to five and yes, sir, life. Okay. That's interesting. So, um, oh, what else do I want to ask about that? So do we all have the same number of lifetimes? For the most part, the difference can be the amount of time you spend in any life. Some people choose to come in and exit right away. This is called a missed 
birth. Mm. Other people will come in and live to what you consider to be uh, an older age of, let's say, 100 or 102. There are many exit points that you have during a lifetime where you can choose to exit if that is what is needed, if your soul is it's getting too heavy for you on this plane, or too difficult or too hard, and or you can go with your final exit point, which is when you have done everything that you have come to do, and then you can exit at that point. But each and every person does have a final exit point, and each and every person does have exit points prior to that in case it just becomes too much. It's almost like an escape route, if you okay. will. Okay. So, so describe what you mean when you say plane. Okay. So where you are existing right now, Earth is considered one plane. Okay? It's a plane. And there are many other planes of existence. There are higher planes and there are lower planes. So on higher, and this is not a judgment saying better or worse. It's just how far has the person evolved or how much love are they experiencing? What are they coming in for? So the higher planes, you might consider them to be more of love, more in touch with that hmm. the lower planes you might explain in a way of saying not as evolved, coming a little bit more from that survival modality or instinct. So are we talking physical planes? Is, is each one of these planes physical, like the earth is physical? For the people who live on them, yes. Okay, so I'm going to interject here. Um, Anita Morajani wrote a great book, Dying to Be Me, and in this book she wrote that she, she was ravaged with cancer and she went into a coma. And while she was in this coma and the doctors were saying she's not coming out, she's, 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 she's basically has died mm -hmm. when she's not coming back, um, what, she, what, what her spirit was doing was traveling and she was going to her family and telling them, look, I'm okay, I've never been better. But they couldn't hear her, they couldn't see her, but she could see and hear everything they were uh, feeling, seeing, uh, everything they were seeing, see, everything they were saying and feeling, but they could not connect with her or hear her. But she also explains in her book there were parallel planes where there's like a version of each one of us that is uh, living out a lifetime also. Hmm. <laughs> Very interesting, isn't it? Is it? Yes, it is. So, okay then can you travel to these planes? Um, I actually have. I, yeah, I didn't know I was doing it at the time. A lot of people do what we call astro travel in our sleep. It's where our spirit is out uh, exploring, if you will. And the term that they've come up for this is astro travel. Okay. Um, I remember two distinct dreams. Where, one where I was and I, I, I was observing, but also felt like it was me. Um, but it was all white, snow-capped, white mountains filled with snow, and there were actually big white yetis there. And uh, yetis were <laughs> seeking me out, and I was um, uh, hiding behind one of these big mountains waiting for the Yeti to give up the search. Now this could just be a dream. It could be an analogy of something going on in my life. And at the time, I had no idea what astro traveling was. I had no idea about reincarnation, past lives, or parallel lives. 
Another one I had was when I went and um, I was a spy. I'm kind of a bad butt in my other lives. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really kick butt in my other lives. I, I'm taking down yetis and I'm a spy. But in this, uh, this other astro travel, there I am. I knew I was a spy, but I had been captured and I was being questioned. And I was like, what have? I didn't care. I was like, you're not going to get the information from me. And then I woke up. And again, I didn't know. I wasn't aware of what astro traveling was at that time. So I just thought, I wonder if these are past lives. I wonder if this is. Um, but it was actually now knowing what I know now. I, I believe it was me seeing what was going on in my other lives, in two of my parallel lives. Okay. Or I was working something out subconsciously. So it sounds like you're describing yourself, but in you know a situation that's not your life today, as you right. know it here. Right. Absolutely. These okay. were definitely they. Well, if I were to, uh, they could have been past lives or, like I said, parallel lives. It was definitely me, um, dressed completely differently, mm -hmm. and I could feel it was me. Uh, but not uh, not this me, not the life I'm experiencing in this life. Okay. And so it's not like a, you did say they could have been past lives. Right. If it, what, so whether you believe in past lives as uh, sequential okay. or parallel lives as all, like Anita Morjani says, all going on at the same time but on different planes. Okay. And so then her description of that and what you just described could be what we would say was maybe, you know, 100 years ago, but it's really going on now. Correct. Also. Yeah. In, okay. Like, the, our universe has a number of different dimensions. Mm -hmm. So who's to say there aren't other realities in other dimensions and maybe in those realities are a version of us uh, living out a life. So th the interesting thing is you can look at this and you can say this is complete hokum. I don't believe it, not for a moment. Mm -hmm. Or you can say, yeah, I truly am buying into this and I truly believe it one way or the other. But on, on, unfortunately, because once we go making that contact again and explaining to people how it really is, is very difficult. So we don't, we have to go on what we feel is right or what we believe is right, what we believe. Now, I, being a hypnotist, I've done a lot of what we call past life regression, where people go to these other lives and see what's going on and they, he, they heal things in their current life. And I've been given the information that if you continually heal one life, you're healing all the lives. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I had a question and it just escaped me. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Um, so you can come back as a, or I shouldn't say come back because we're talking sequential if when I say come back whereas you're also saying it's parallel correct now what if now here's a thought now that just adds more to this what if we exist at on this plane and we come back on this plane until we evolve to a certain point wherein we can come back on a higher level plane Okay. Because I have heard, as you go out, so shall you come in. And what you create is what you come back to. So the higher we evolve, which is always the lesson, always what I'm hearing, just evolve, and evolve means become love. Okay. And when I hear that, the higher we go in that, or the more, the more strong 
we become in that love, the, if, if we come back, we come back to a much higher place. Is that? When like, are you done? <laughs> oh, <laughs> everybody wants to know that. It's so funny. I have people that come in and they say, this is my last life and I know it is. And I don't no. have the heart to say, oh, you're going to be very disappointed when you're born again. Because <laughs> uh, I instantly hear, no, it's not. No, it's not. Um, I don't. That's a great question. And there's a lot of theories on that, that there's, there's, you know, one big thing and we all go back. There's a great white light that comes and we mm -hmm. all go back. And I, I, I am going to, you're done when you encompass all that is and understand that all that is, is an illusion, that you're living an illusion just as the dream is seemingly an illusion. The daytime is that same illusion. When you understand that and you awaken, there's no need for the falseness any longer. So that's when you're done. Hmm. So what does it mean to awaken, right? Right. Let's see. Let's see if I can find out what it means to awaken. When you awaken, you have the complete understanding of the illusion, illusionary life that you are representing. You understand that you are not this, that none of this is it. There is just love. I know that you have many questions, and every time I answer, it leaves you with many more. So it's really the goal is, even though um, many people don't want to leave this earth, the goal is to never need to come back. Yes and no. The goal is to understand that the earth is an illusion created by the self, the need for identity instead of understanding that it is one, all is one, there is no separateness, you are not you, I am not me, it is a we. When you leave this physical realm, you go back to a light that is made up from millions of souls that just make the brightest, most beautiful light there is. They know stronger together. But when there is the need for separateness, who am I? Who am I? Then, well, let's find out. Let's go down and let's experience who are you? And the answer can never come because you are not a you. You are a we. That would just, um, that would confuse so many people. It leaves many more questions than answers. But when you really think about it, in your moments of silence, in your moments of true love, you have a feeling that is greater than anything you could have ever accomplished on your own. You have a feeling of, togetherness, when you think back to your happiest memory, your greatest moment of love, whatever that moment was, mm -hmm. and that goes far beyond anything that's explainable, that is home. Well, not quite home because home is this very, it's pure love. There's nothing else. So what I can say, the further you come from love, the further you go from love, the further you go from home. 
the more you become love, understand love, our love, the more you go closer to home. So where are our loved ones now who have passed? They're on a parallel plane. And um, I typically see them about three feet off the ground right here. Our loved ones are with us. So it's not like we believe when somebody passes, they go up and they go to heaven. Mm -hmm. And for in many cases, they, they do um, go up. They do. But most of the time, they're around you. And this plane is a higher or a more evolved plane. Uh, they don't have the physical bodies, so they don't have all the physical worry and fear that we, we have here. So they can also be past and near us, but then also reincarnated in another yes. earth life. Yes, I'll answer this and then it's, we're getting really close. So typically, you wait for your whole soul group to get back home and then you can start again. Okay. So I have a friend um, who that's about to happen for them. None of the three children had children, and all of, they're all at that point where the final ones are about to go back home, and then the soul group will start again, which is a, a whole nother conversation. Wow. We could talk about this for months on end and channel information about this for months on end and probably still just have more questions about it. And I love the fact that people are open to understanding there might be something else. There might be more. And seeking out a way to find more. What is it really about? Why are we here? And what do we need to do to get to that point? Um, I, and I'll, I'll say this in closing. We often wonder, why was I born to this life and others are born to this life? Mm -hmm. Perhaps in their last incarnation, they evolved higher. So if we just keep evolving, being love, learning love, we will get there. Thank you so much, Patty, for being here today. This is such an incredible conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. You're That's welcome. Wonderful. And thank you for joining us on this episode of Psychic Medium, Tony G. Have an absolutely incredible rest of your day. And think about, if you weren't afraid, who would you be, what would you do, where would you go? Because fear is the only thing that stops you from being love. Thanks, and have a great day. Mm -hmm.